Hi all, um, in this video, I'll be um, touching on a few subjects about um, creating high quality uh, publication level visualizations um, using R um, through Galaxy. And this is a continuation of, the, uh, of a previous um, set of videos and uh, following up on the RNA-Sec for transcriptomics um, lesson of, of Galaxy. All this material is available on the Galaxy Training Network, um, and I will be following those instructions and, and I will guide you through um, what we are trying to do here. Um, as uh, before, we use Galaxy to launch our studio, and um, it's always available um, while it's running in the active environments, where you can see a link here. Um, and um, the point that we ended in the last video was about um, how to use Diplier and TADR. Um, to uh, wrangle around and, and work with, uh, with the data. I'll be closing the script and I will create a new file, a new script um, that we will use to, uh, to do visualizations um, using a new library called ggplot. So uh, I'm going to save this again. I'm going to save it as our visualization. Um, and um, we're going to have to, uh, we'll be working on this um, script um, here. You can see it's available right down there. Our environment is completely empty. If it's not in your end, feel free to click on the brush window and remove everything here. Uh, be aware of that when you're doing that, um, you're actually uh, removing every information that's available there. So uh, as I said, we will be continuing um, from the information done in the transcriptomics, the reference-based RNA-seq data analysis. Um, and we will be using as input the final table generated with the differential expressed genes, as which include some statistics and so forth. So I'm going to use the read CSV format uh, function that we saw earlier and the URL file available there. So um, if I run this, um, we should be able to see um, the new file uh, right, right here. So um, we have loaded our file. And what we are going to be um, trying to do are um, a few visualizations, specifically going to do a volcano plot. Uh, we'll see how we can um, make a rather nice looking volcano plot based on this information. And we'll try to split and create various various plots based for, by Krauser, for example. And finally, we're going to do a bar plot of the differential express genes. So uh, we're going to be using um, a ggplot. And I'm going to, uh, first of all, load uh, this plot uh, to into our, um, in our environment. Um, as you can see, I've run it, control enter or command enter depending on who you are, and um, the lab has been loaded. So the overall idea, the overall structure is that it creates a plot by putting layers one on top of the other. So the base function is called the plot. Uh, it expects expect as input um, the data that's going to be used to actually plot. Um, a setting which is basically um, a mapping. I can type it out as a mapping actually, and you can see that it's an aesthetic that contains basically what are the axes. X is this one, Y is something else, and so forth. And after setting this um, text by using the plus, you put additional layer. So we have a first geom, geom function. All of them start like geom something. So you have geom function one, plus another layer, uh, geom function two, um, and so forth. So this is, this is a, this will not execute. This is not an actual command. It's basically the structure of how geom plot works, the ggplot works. You might um, think of this very similar to the piping that we saw earlier in dplyr, where you, you, um, you pass the input of something to another. And although it, it seems similar, this is um, the concept that you have, you establish your, um, your, your um, base level, uh, what are the data and the axes that you're working on, then two layers on top of one another and, and making a more complex uh, plot at the end. So I'll put this as common just um, to keep them in mind. Um, and I'll start directly by, um, by actually um, loading some data to ggplot. So I'm going to ggplot. I'll be very explicit. As you can see, our study is already giving information on how this works. So um, I can say data, and I'm going to add the annotated differential genes um, data frame that we saw earlier. And uh, I can actually run this directly. And as you can see, 
um, it happened, something happened here in the plots, we actually see a plot. Um, but it's basically a gray, um, gray background. What it means is that it tried to create a plot, but basically it does not have enough information yet. The only thing that it knows is that we are going to be using this particular data to do some plot. Uh, given that we are going to do a, um, a volcano plot, I'm going to use mapping um, and uh, I'm going to use the aesthetic to set the X and the Y. So the X is going to be the value that comes in from the log, um, log 2.fc. And what is the Y is going to come from the P value. You can check the actual names here, so you can be absolutely certain. So it's log 2.fc dot, and the p-value, <coughs> sorry, is here b dot value. Just as a reminder, r is case sensitive, so if I change the, 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 the types, it's going to be, um, it will create an, an error. So if I run this again, you see now that in addition to the gray background, which is basically, I know that there are going to be some data plotted here, now we also have the axis and we see that we have um, the log 2FC on the, on the bottom line and the p-value on the, on the y-axis. So these are, and actually, as you can see, um, our studio and R is clever enough to see uh, what are the ranges of the values for log 2FC and for p-value and it scaled the different axes based on that. So you see that this goes uh, up to 7.5 and something. And then you have log 2FC from minus four to something else. <clears throat> So now we have the x-axis as the log to fill change and the y-axis as the, the p-value. Um, if we want to plot and using the same structure, now I'm ready to add a, um, uh, some function that actually does plotting. And one of the most basic ones is geom point. As you can see by typing geom and, and the underscore, all the different functions that can be applied on top of that are listed here. I'm going to be using point so I can run now the whole thing and we're going to be seeing here um, the, uh, the plotting of, of this particular um, uh, file. As you can see now and um, the X run has X and we see uh, our first ggplot2 uh, plot. Um, congratulations. So um, this is a um, uh, a, 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 it's called volcano plot because it sort of reminds of a volcano that things are pushing up. Um, and basically it, it's a type of a scatter plot um, that shows the statistical significance, which is the p-value uh, versus the magnitude of chains in, in uh, which is the whole chains. The most upregulated up genes are towards the right, right here. The most downregulated genes are towards the left, right here. And the most statistically significant ones are up at the top of. So by looking at this plot, uh, we can have a um, quick identification of, of how many genes or which genes have a large whole change and are also statistically significant. And basically, hopefully, uh, they have uh, their biologically significant genes. So um, for those who might be already aware of how a volcano plot looks like, this might not be it. And um, the reason is that we have a lot of data points uh, close to zero, which creates this like a, a vertical um, a, a, a line here. So what we can do, and I'm going to um, copy the exact same command so that we can slightly tweak it, is we can ask to change um, the values of what is actually plotting. And instead of having the p-value, we're going to have the negative log 10 of the p-value. So in other words, we are going to create um, a, um, a logarithmic scale on, on, on the vertical axis. So as you can see, this is much closer to things that you might have already seen um, in, in, in literature in publications and so forth. A, a good question at this point might be, okay, everything looks good. Uh, why do we have a gap here? Uh, we can understand this plan, this plan, but we have a range in black here. So as a reminder, at the end of the RNA-seq <coughs> pipeline, one of the things that we did is um, to remove genes uh, with a significant adjusted p-value um, over 0 0.05. So in other words, we kept only the statistically 
<coughs> significant genes, p value less than 0 0 0.05, 0 0.05, and an absolute fold change higher than two. So in other words, we want the log two fold change to be either less than minus one or more than one. And so this is how we ended up with 130 genes at this point. So for this reason, this is a blank. If we use the entire annotated um, genes output of the rna seq analysis, we will have a much more complete picture. But that, again, will create and um, will introduce um, uh, some uh, noise at that point. <clears throat> so now we've seen how we can create a plot. Uh, it might be relevant to keep something else in mind as well. Um, we can save an entire plot as a variable. And we can use this to actually build layers on top of the other. So I will actually assign a plot to a variable. So let's say that we want the differential genes plot. This is our variable. And I'm going to um, take this part of ggplot, the first one. So the one that sets the data and sets the mapping. I can run this and you can see that there is a new variable here um, uh, defined. I uh, can actually use uh, this function to clear all the plots so that we can see what are the new plots that will be created not right now. So we don't have a plot. If I, I let me read on this, uh, no plot is actually being created. Um, now I can use this variable and I can use the plus sign to add a new layer. And our layer would be uh, geon point if we want to create the exact same plot. So by running this, uh, we see that it actually takes the, the base plot that was already stored into the variable and adds the new layer um, in, in this particular form. So we have um, the exact same plot as before. A, a, a useful uh, tip here is the location where we put the plus sign. Uh, you might be, so it's, uh, we, we, we use the same sort of visual structure as we use the dplyr and we stack one layer down the other so we can see them as actual layers. Um, but it's easy to do um, the same thing like that. It will run easily and will produce the exact same plot. So some people may be tempted to do something like that. So, okay, this looks similar. It, it should work, let me remove all the plots. I will, re, um, so instead of putting the plus sign up here, as I said, as I had initially, I put it on, on my low. So if I run this, you see that you have your base plot. So it understood the variable itself, but no um, actual plot is done. You have an error saying that you cannot use plus with a single argument. And R Studio and R is clever enough to say, did you actually put plus in a new line? So basically you need to put the plus here so that R is aware that a new layer is coming in. So it expects something more to come in. <clears throat> to come in. So if I run those two commands, now it's run, um, it runs uh, perfectly. So now that we have um, a first plot, um, let's try to actually make it more visually appealing. Um, and we'll take it step by step. I'm going to copy um, this entire thing again, and I'm going to be updating constantly so that it's absolutely clear. Um, let me remove this one so we need, if we can see um, the evolution of, of the plot. So let me run this. This is our, our base plot. So now we see a lot of black points, um, but it might be interesting to, um, to see whether there is a lot of overlapping here. Um, a good point for that is to add transparency which is indicated as alpha. Um, and by setting alpha, for example, equal to 0 0.5, so half transparency, we can see, and I will run this, you can see that now um, the, plot, the points have been a bit more transparent. So you can see some places where there are a lot of overlapping points, but others are a bit more, more sparse. So this is a bit more easy to understand, but it's still a black and, uh, and gray um, plot. We can add some color into the geom point directly by saying, for example, we want the color um, to be, um, let's say, blue. And if I run this, <clears throat> we can see that all the points have now been changed to, um, to a blue color. And this is, a, again, nice. Um, but how about 
um, we create the colors based on, on a particular piece of formation. So how about we um, change the color and we define color based on, on the points um, that they are located, on the strand that they're located. So this is an interesting point to keep in mind. So far um, here, I've been changing information directly to the geom point uh, because I'm attaching direct values to them. And I'm, let me copy this one. Um, however, now I'm asking to use a variable that is coming from my data as a way to introduce additional piece of information. So this means that I want to introduce a next level of mapping, which means that I need to define the color not at the point level, but a level where we're actually doing the mapping. So I'm going to go into the aesthetic and I'm going to add here another, another um, a, a, a combination saying that the color is actually the strand and I don't need this one anymore. So if I run this command here, um, we will be able to see that R has selected two colors, red and green lead systems. Transpiracy is still the same, but now it gives us a much more um, detailed information of where its point is coming from. So um, minus strand is the red buttons, the red points, plus strand are the, um, the green points. So this already looks a bit better, um, but how about we actually change also the, um, the labels of the axis? So like log two of is, is, yes, it's useful to know, but it's basically the name of the column here um, as is. So in order to do that, I'm going to add another layer and I'm going to use the labs, which stands for labels. I'm going to say that the X label is going to be log two, um, which is the fold change, log two fold change. <clears throat> and the um, uh, loot foot load change, uh, let's parenthesis here, there it is. And the Y label is um, the minus log 10, which is um, P uh, value, parenthesis, and I'm closing. So um, now I will have much more informative um, access so I can easily assess what I'm actually looking. So this is log two and it's in full change. This is log 10 minus log 10 of the p-value. So it is enough for someone to understand what is happening, what is the information here and so forth. So this is a much more elegant uh, plot. So let's take this one, one step further. So this is all the information put in, in what plot. Um, ggplot actually has a, a special technique that allows us to um, split one plot into multiple ones based on a particular um, aspect. And this aspect usually tends to be a factor. Um, in order to do that, uh, we will use our particular um, data set and we will split our volcano plot, this volcano plot, into five panels, each panel being a distinct chromosome. So um, in order to do that, I will copy this again to maintain um, a continuity. And I'm going to add yet another layer, this layer being called facet grid. And now I'm going to put dot, tilde, and chromosome. I'm going to explain that in a second. I think I've typed this correctly. So let me run this. And this time around, you should be able to see that every chromosome has its own color. So instead of having a single, uh, a single plot where all the, uh, all the chromosomes are sewn together, we now see how the different um, points are mapped, are presented uh, across, different, uh, across the five different chromosomes. Um, it's important to note, so the facet grid uh, expects as input um, a, uh, um, the, the structure that you want to, to, to present this. So you want basically your rows, how many rows you want, and how many columns you want. And you can have a, a much more complicated um, uh, functions here. So in our instance, um, the dot stands for one. So I, I want one row across as many columns as defined by the chromosome. So in this case, I have high chromosomes. Um, I can easily change this the other way around. So I can do chromosome tilde dot. So 
as you might expect, I will have five rows because I put the number of rows defined by the number of chromosomes you have and one row, one column. So let me run this. And as you can see, now I have this particular um, information back and forth. Um, so this is how you can create multiple plots from basically the same one, but using a factor to actually split them into multiple individually designed and individually structured um, subplots. Um, let's keep it like that. And we can try to go even one step further and make it even more um, interesting. Um, let's say that there is a limitation um, to, um, to how we want to, to print this out. Uh, we can use themes. And here I'm going to use theme black and white. So if I run this, <clears throat> you'll see that it will change the background. It will make it, it, it will increase the, the contrast so it's much more readable or printed out. By using these arrows, I can go back and forth so you can see the difference that now the gray that was on the back has been um, omitted a bit and the, um, the, the, the letters are a bit more sharp and you can um, much more easily identify what is, uh, what is going there. And also because this is a small enough plot, maybe the grid lines are a bit um, too much. And um, so I can also get another layer and I'm going to ask from the theme to um, remove the, uh, the, 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 the grid on the palette. So I'm going to set the panel of grid to be blank. So if I run this whole thing, highlight, click run, you see that actually can remove everything in the back. Um, so as you can see, there are multiple different ways of interacting with that and everything is done as layers. So at any point, it's easy enough to disregard one particular um, layer and, and focus on anything else. For example, I might not, I don't want to have the facet grid anymore. I'm going to copy, uh, comment it out and hopefully this will work uh, um, just as well. And you can see that this actually produces, um, it, it maintains the theme, no background because we've removed it here, but now everything is together in the same place. Uh, there are several different themes that you can work with. Uh, the most common one are um, theme minimal, uh, theme um, light, uh, theme void is uh, one uh, useful theme if you want to start from a completely blank state and create a new, like really handcrafted theme um, based on that. Um, you can go to the ggplot2 website and you can see a complete listing of themes. Um, and interestingly enough, there are a few things that sort of um, include an Excel 2003 um, theme. So you can um, create plots that look like Excel, but actually created um, using um, ggplot. Um, so uh, as you can see, it's easy, uh, it's um, convenient enough and I will um, suggest that you go through the material itself uh, on the Galaxy Train Network website uh, to try a few of the exercises that are listed um, there. All right, so finally, now that we've done a volcano plot and we played a bit about um, the uh, different layers and how they work, let's try to do um, another type of, 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 of plot, uh, this time a, a bar plot that will show the number of differential genes across, for example, the chromosomes. And we're going to use the exact same structure. So I'm going to use digiplot again. Um, as data, I will use the annotated differential stress genes. Um, as you can see now, I don't include the data equals because I use the same order. I don't need to um, explicitly state that this is the data. R is clever enough to understand that if I put them in the exact same order that it expects it. And um, now as an aesthetic, I'm going to um, set um, the X to be um, the feature and um, I'm going to use the fill color as the chromosome. So what I'm going to produce now, because it's a bar plot, you actually need to define what are the, um, the features as the Y X. So I'm going to have as many uh, bar plots as, um, as um, the features. And the fill that its feature will have, its bar, its, its bar will have, have will depend on, on the chromosome. Um, so let's create that. Um, the actual box plot is defined by geom bar. And um, let's go ahead and do some faceting directly. And I'm going to do a facet grid again. 
uh, using the chromosome as um, the, um, the variable to, um, to create um, the different subplots. Let me run this. Uh, and as you can see, it creates a, a very, very interesting um, box plot. As you can see, um, the um, y axis, the x axis is, are the three features. If you recall from our earlier um, part of the lesson, um, the um, anti differentiated genes has um, only three features. It's a factor of three levels, and these are the three features that it actually has. And this is what we got. The vast majority of them are in protein coding, but we have um, some pseudogenes, mostly in, in this chromosome, and um, some long coding RNAs in, in these two chromosomes. Um, so there is a bit of a redundancy here, which I hope that you can see. Uh, the chromosome is labeled uh, on the individual facet. So you see chromosome 12 and so forth. Uh, but we also have a legend here that red is chromosome 12 and so forth, which is a bit um, redundant. So what we can do is we can ask um, to, um, to remove this, this information. And because this is coming in from the geome bar, I can go and set this as a parameter, which is one of the common ones, uh, and say, so legend, uh, which by default equals uh, true, uh, I'm going to set to false. So if I rerun this whole thing, um, you can see that now it's only our box plot, our bar plots, um, the different colors are indicated already. You can identify what each color corresponds to here, and you have all the information um, on, on, on the back here. I can do again, again uh, the theme, I'm doing black and white, and I'm going to rerun this, and I will have my final plot ready to be added to my, uh, to my article. Uh, you also have the option of exporting directly as an image or as a PDF if you want to do more, um, or you can go ahead and um, create a PNG file directly in R. So um, ggplot and R has enormous functionality, a lot of flexibility um, to do a lot of the things that will otherwise take a lot of time. Um, and uh, it also has the X advantage that everything that you do is easily repeatable and reproducible if you capture the, the, the code as it is. Um, data manipulation and visualization are important parts of any RNA-seq data analysis. And this is why we continued the RNA-seq data with um, the RNA-seq pipeline with this introduction to R and visualization. And Galaxy, as you can see, um, is easy enough to connect them uh, together. So both RStudio, this interactive uh, functionality with, uh, with the rest of the Galaxy. And there are several tutorials already on the Galaxy training network. So I will urge you to go through them and, and um, they are very deeply detailed so you can easily follow them. Um, I know that working with a programming language at first might be a bit intimidating, especially for the first time, uh, but pushing through uh, is very rewarding um, and it definitely will outweigh any frustrations that you might have um, at any point. Um, R might not be the easiest to learn programming language ever created, um, but it is, um, even with a little knowledge of R um, and, and some little experience, you can do a lot of incredible things and you can um, get well yourself on, on the way to becoming an accomplished R user just by doing this exercise that we've done so far. So thank you, I hope you find it useful and uh, feel free to uh, review all of those, um, all of this material on, on the Galaxy Trading Network as well.